So if you're watching this tutorial, uh, you should already have a wing that you've designed in Onshape uh, or one that you've designed and then imported to Onshape that's within the size requirements. So now the second half of the competition is to use SimScale to evaluate uh, the performance of your wing. So you can go to simscale.com, log in, and then that's a new project. But yes, well, comp, we have to put evaluate lift in the drag and create. And we have to have, let's put aerospace and defense and create project. And now, instead of importing from our computer, we can import from Onshape. Sometimes if you've just made the design, it can have some difficulties importing, but let's try the 15 degree one instead. Yep, it's fine. The zero degree, degree one having, is having some problems, so maybe just reload and close your Onshape um, window if you're having the same issues. But I'll just import the 15 degree one uh, to be easy. Now, go and just wait. There should be in a second wing imported into SimScale. Yep, just reloaded the page. And now before we create a, a simulation, we need to edit a copy. And so what we need to do is add a flow volume because we need a space where the air is simulated because it was too computationally expensive just to simulate a huge um, infinite space of air. So instead we add a flow, an external flow volume, so which is just like a rectangle. And in the X direction, we need X max to be zero because we're going to use a symmetry um, option in sim scale to reflect our wing uh, in this in this face here um, so that when we will simulate the whole wing but for now we're just um, simulating this half wing and then uh, increase the box I might y max I might increase to seven and then z min or that make 0 0.7 Seven. All that's required is that there's enough space around the wing. Oh, and um, X men can get done to sure. So all that's required is the box is big enough. Let's go one point one, so that it doesn't um, force any of these faces to be too close to the wing because that would mean that the air might um, have some uh, the hit some force due to being uh, compressed between the face and the wing but uh, here we have no troubles because we made the box big enough and then we just apply yep and now you see if we hide this face we now have uh, an empty box so the air can flow through and a very important step is to delete the original um, wing, or you'll have a trouble trouble later when you try and run the simulation. Just check. Yep, all looks good. And then we can save. Um, there we go. And now we can create simulation. So we're using incompressible. And for we just yep. And for materials, we just go air. Default apply and assign volumes flow region perfect. Now, for boundary conditions, we need a velocity inlet. So, this is the most important. Um, hide this face. Yep. Where we can see our, where uh, the wind is coming from is this face here. So, we select that and then we look down here. So, the wind will need to go 10 meters per second in the y direction. 
as that's um, the speed for the competition. And now, so we don't, we're putting air into the box. We need somewhere for it to leave. So we have this pressure outlet on the back, just at zero pa uh, pascals. So that's, so above atmospheric pressure. So we just simulate it all at atmospheric pressure. And then we add the symmetry boundary condition uh, along this face. So then we simulate the whole wing and then the rest of the boundary conditions are just a wall. So that's top, bottom, show all this wall here. So now we have these three faces and they should be slip. Yep, because that means there's no friction between the surrounding air uh, on these surfaces and the air in the box. <clears throat> now we can go down to result control and we can add forces and moment coefficients and add So we can look down here, drag direction will be in the y direction and lift will be in the z direction. Um, we don't need to worry about but where the center is um, because that's only for center of rotation, that's for rotation and moment coefficients. So it's, we just worry about uh, the force coefficients. So lift, yep, z, drag, x, nope, we want y. Free stream VR velocity 10, reference length, just leave it at 1, reference area value, leave it at 1. Um, and then assigned faces, no, uh, we need to assign the faces of things that supply all of the face of the box. And then now, you can select the main wing tip and make sure you select the end of the wing and just have a look. Make sure there's you know, face, other faces. Yep, so that's all good. These are three assigned faces. Press save. And then now we can go down to uh, simulation rooms. Actually, let's go mesh first. We can. Sometimes I find just upping it to 5.5 means you get a slightly better mesh. And then we can generate. And now you just have to wait for the mesh to generate. And then after that, you can immediately go to a simulation run. And then you can just start that. And then once that's done, uh, we can po post process the results. So it should take 10 minutes for the mesh and then another 10 minutes for the simulation. So once you've um, finished completing the mesh, you will end up with this, uh, your flow region with this interesting pattern on it. And these are just showing the cells, but um, the simulation will run on. So it can't just run on a massive block. It has to run on lots of tiny little elements. Um, and you can see some are small. And as you go away, they get bigger. There was just this warning here, but it was close to, uh, it, it wasn't, it wasn't that bad. So, um, you can try and run the simulation anyway. You see, I ran it and it all went well. So we can post-process the results. You just let it load and you'll see there's the 3D model and we can have a look through um what's happening there in a sec but here we go so we want to go to the force and moment coefficient so this is what we were tracking and you see there's moment coefficient drag coefficient lift coefficient and then uh, uh these two others um but we're only interested in the drag and the lift so you can see the lift is up here and we just go to the end because as you can see it's meant to converge over time 
wasn't actually that great convergence. Usually it's a lot flatter of a line, a bit more like the moment coefficient. You can see it settled around 1.8. Let's, let's call it 0 0.18. And then there was drag coefficient. This is good convergence. And this settled around 0 0.33. Anyway, yeah, just take the, the final value at a thousand of lift and and drag, and then you can use that as um, in your calculations to work out the lift to drag ratio, just do lift coefficient divided by drag coefficient. I'll give you your result. And now we can go back to the solution fields, which is a 3D model. And um, so this isn't needed for competition, but it's a, a great thing to have a look at. And so if the cutting planes are wrong axes, let's do the x axes instead. Yep, there you go. And you can see we can change how far through the flow volume we're looking. And you can see this is giving us the velocity. So the bluer it is, the slower, and the red is faster. So you can see... Ooh, it speeds up initially at the front, but then it slows down. Um, and increase the opacity, why not? Come back towards it, not that far. Not even that far, yep, there. Towards the tip. Interesting. You can see the velocity region. you can slice through. You can see there's this big slow area here. So that's making it look like there's lots of um, what we would call flow detachment. So you can see that initially there's this small, um, near the front edge of a wing, there's a small slow pocket. Then as you get about halfway, it becomes a bigger pocket that doesn't follow the shape of a wing. So what this is, is this is, um, as I said, flow detachment. So it means the air is no longer following the curvature of the wing, but instead detaches and then goes uh, and mixes with the rest of the air that's not so close to the wing. And this is actually can cause a lot of drag. Um, and so if we turn off this cutting plane and go to the parts color, uh, we can increase the opacity a bit. Oh, actually, never mind. And then we can add our, there we go, particle race. Yeah. So we click just on the front edge in front of the wing. Make sure the parts goes back. Oh, mine, let's choose a new position. And And we can probably increase the spacing slightly, at least for a vertical. <clears throat> and increase the size so we can have a bit better view of what's going on. But you can see this is, if you've ever watched F1, this is a kind of graphic that might look familiar to you. Um, so it's what would happen to the particles, like an individual particle that starts on the front edge, um, what would happen to it as it flowed over a wing. And you can see, if you look down here, there's this uh, circular pattern. So this is, we saw it was near the end of a wing. So this is a vortex formed by the end of a wing. Um, so you, that will contribute to drag. And you can see, even though we have our wing tip, there's still this vortex. So, um, we can see that we might need a a better um, winglet to try and stop these vortex vortices at the end of a wing because that is what they do. They're meant to reduce the vortex that formed at the end of a wing um, due to the high pressure and the low pressure areas. Um, there's nothing in between them, so the high pressure wants to go to the low pressure, so it does this uh, movement and it's becomes it carries on in a circular fashion and forms of a vortex. Um, so that's an area of improvement. But other than that, um, 
that, that's the most important thing on this wing. Um, if we go back to the cutting plane, we've looked at velocity magnitude so far, but we can also do pressure. And this is very important as pressure, it, oh, and, and my, actually that's, that's on particle trace. We want this to be pressure. There we go. We can go along the wing, we can look. Mm, there seems to be good high pressure down low, but there's not a lot of low pressure actually on top, just a bit of a frontal wing. Gee, we, there's a bit more as we go out. And you can see it stops about halfway through the wing. Um, and that's where we saw the flow detachment. So that probably shows that the flow detachment on this wing is a big issue um, at 15 degrees. So this is why we're doing the high angle of attack as well as the low, uh, at the standard zero degree angle of attack, because um, it's all well and good flying forwards, but when you want to gain altitude, um, you want to look at the performance of your wing in that situation. And we can see that there's clearly this big flow detachment issue. So a way to solve this um, could be to have a gap in the center, uh, around the center of your wing to allow more air to flow like along the path of my mouse and that would uh, enable better flow attachment uh, as the energized air coming from the free stream would help um, keep the flow attached. Um, but yeah, you can do whatever you want, try out lots of different options um, and try and see what works best for you and we will look at both zero degrees and 15 degrees, um, the lift to drag ratio at those angles, and we'll come up with uh, who did the best. Um, so good luck, uh, and I hope that makes it clear for you.